On this week's edition of the Overtime, spring training is in full swing down in the valley. Then, how NAU men's and women's basketball are preparing for the Big Sky Conference tournaments. Finally, on Get Out There, we're exploring Walnut Canyon. All that and more on this edition of the Overtime. Hello and welcome to the Overtime, Northern Arizona's only sports show. I'm your host, Adriana Sparks, and today I'm joined by my co-host, Angel Castellano. Angel, how are you feeling? Thanks, Adriana. I'm so excited to be here. We have a lot to talk about, so why don't we get right into it? The San Diego Padres took on the Los Angeles Angels during the first week of spring training. Sports reporter Ashley Hinchy talked to some of the players about their feelings on the upcoming season. Baseball is back down here in Peoria. Players are ready to reunite with their team and work on their skills. The San Diego Padres closed out the 2023 season strong, winning 20 of their final 27 games. They're hoping to carry that momentum into this season, and it all starts in spring training. Starting pitcher Matt Waldron and his teammates are eager to get back on the diamond. Yeah, number one, just staying healthy and getting back to feeling good every day. So just staying healthy and, and sharpening some tools. Outfielder Tim LaCastro is happy to be back in the desert after spending his past few seasons on the East Coast. Uh, I got drafted by the Blue Jays, so I started in Florida and came out here with the Dodgers in Arizona. Florida last year, last couple of years, now back in Arizona. I mean, both spots are great facilities and can't beat the weather in either spot. I mean, I'm from New York, so right now it's snowing there, so can't beat it once spring training gets started. As spring training unfolds, Locastro emphasizes the importance of getting to know your teammates during this time. You know, I'm trying to, like I said, get to know these guys, and uh, I feel like every time you step in between the lines, you're trying to win a baseball game. doesn't matter if it's spring training, the season, fall ball, you're just trying to win baseball games. Spring training is just getting started, and we are just about a month away from the regular season. Ashley Hinchy, NAZ Sports. Nothing gets better than baseball season, and it all begins now with spring training. We Arizonans get the luxury to have preseason baseball in the Phoenix area. The Valley is home to the Cactus League, compromising of 15 different MLB teams, including none other than the reigning World Series champions, the Texas Rangers, and the runner-up Arizona Diamondbacks. That's right, Angel. This is certainly shaping up to be a very exciting baseball season. Sports reporter Brian Adams also went down to the Valley last week, and he's in studio to tell us more. Thanks, Adriana. Last week, I went down to the Peoria Sports Complex to watch some spring training baseball and learn about the paths of the major leagues for a few Padres players and their manager. Baseball is back in the swing of things, and down here at spring training at the Peoria Sports Complex, I was able to catch up with a few Padres players and manager Mike Schilt about their career before making it to the big leagues. Most players drafted in the MLB start in the minor leagues, and that starts with rookie ball in the fall and spring. Outfielder Tim LaCastro thinks the games are important to help players improve their skills. I think uh, when you're younger and just the development of getting to play those extra games when it's September, October, November, it just helps you go a long way as to sort of fine-tune your craft in baseball. Pitcher Luis Patino, who is making his return to the Padres this year, remembers the coaching staff and good memories that he says helped him grow in his early career in the minor leagues with the Padres and is happy to be back home in San Diego. You know, things, man. Padres organization is all for me. You know, I'm the view here. Uh, was really good memories, really good coaches. They, they, they helped me a lot with my, you know, pitching staff. However, the minor leagues and rookie ball are not just for the players. Padres manager Mike Schilt spent 12 years in the minor league system as a scout, hitting coach and manager growing as a baseball mind before joining the St. Louis Cardinals coaching staff in 2017 and becoming their full-time manager in 2018. Some of the best teachers in this game. So, but I took advantage of my experience. I took advantage of their experiences. And, um, you know, mostly I was able to, you know, do what I could to, to make sure I did everything to help the player in their career because that's ultimately why we're here. Spring training is the melting pot for major and minor league players and gives fans a chance to watch these players and managers grow before they make it to the MLB. Brian Adams, NAZ Sports. I certainly had a great time learning about these guys down at spring training last week. I can't wait for regular season baseball to start up again. Back to you guys at the desk. Thanks, Brian. Spring training is just starting here, but here in Flagstaff, basketball has just ended their regular season. The NAU men's basketball team fell to the Northern Colorado Bears on Monday for their final game in the Dome this season. Head coach Shane Burkar said that the team has some serious adjustments to make before facing off against the Idaho State Bengals in the Big Sky Tournament. The adjustments 
I'm, it's, I mean, know your personnel. We do that. We got to be better in our ball screen coverage for sure. I mean, they only shot nine three pointers tonight, so I would say the ball screen coverage has to get better. And honestly, our guards got to be more physical. We got to be able to keep guys in front of them. Point guard Jaden Jackson is confident in his team's abilities in the postseason. Most confidence that you know this week going go in there, work hard, um, clean up some stuff, and then get ready for the tournament. The Lumberjacks finished a regular season 14-18 overall and 7-11 in conference play. They're looking to make a staggering run in the conference tournament like they did last season when they made it to the championship as the ninth seed. I don't know about you, Angel, but I am definitely excited to see how the Big Sky Tournament shapes up after a season like this. We're going to switch gears into high school athletics, though. The Coconino Panthers just hosted their first home game of the beach volleyball season. Earlier this week, Coconino High Girls Beach Volleyball opened up their season at home with a win over North Valley Christian after a 5-0 sweep. Junior Lucy Stiegler, leader on the once court and University of Pacific commit, helped seal the first set win with junior Laurel Cernahaus. She says she's happy to be a part of the team as a captain. For Beach, it's like I'm a lot more of a captain. and It's like nice to be able to lead and I like helping all the littles and it's just fun. Head coach Scott Dendy mentioned how impressed he was at the pair's ability to work together to seal the win in the first and second sets. Really proud of the ones. Like One of the things I wasn't sure about them is how they were going to handle adversity. And they were down that whole first set and were able to pull it out. And so I was really impressed with them there. From here on out, we expect to be in the wins column and we got to go to work every day. To Junior Addison Callahan helped secure the win in the twos court after she racked up several aces and kills. This comes right after she upgraded from the threes to the twos, which she says is an opportunity to prove herself. I think that switching from threes to do it, it really uh, like makes me want to fight harder and prove it because I like to be competitive and I like to show that I deserve uh, to be like higher. So uh, I take it as like a confidence boost and I use it to push me harder to do better. The Panthers are now one and one on the season as they prepare to take on Trivium Prep at home tomorrow. No, I just think we're going to have a good season this year. So, Adriana Sparks, NAZ Sports. Head coach Scott Dendy mentioned that after the game, he was not only thankful for the first sweep of the season, he was also thankful to be playing in such nice weather. Last season, they did not host a game before spring break due to the record-setting snowfall. Yeah, Angel, Dendy told me that they only had to shovel once on the field so far this season, so it's looking like it's going to be a very exciting year for these young ladies, and I can't wait to see how their season shapes out. We're headed into another quick break, but stick around. When we return, we're exploring Walnut Canyon in our Get Out There segment. The black truck. Hey, Christina from accounting. Yeah, hi. <laughs> hey, I used to date a girl named Christina. Oh, really? Yeah, and then she dumped me for my best friend. You want to see some photos of them that I took? I don't. I thought we talked about this, buddy. Buzz and overshared again? Yeah. Yeah. I'm going to call a car. That's a smart idea. So, yeah, I know. That's why I did it. Hey, you're going to get back to the top of the mountain. Does that mean I'm going to get back with Christina? No. Oh. I don't remember how it started. Go to that. Oh, Our back and forth. It always came back. Dad! You probably don't remember what you told me. That was perfect. But I heard every word. Welcome back, sports fans. Let's take a break from the courts and fields to explore the awe-inspiring beauty of Walnut Canyon National Monument. Now that we're used to discussing incredible plays and epic matchups, but trust me, this trip is nothing short of a grand slam in the world of outdoor adventures. Take a look. On this week's edition of Get Out There, I am exploring Walnut Canyon National Monument. This 20 mile long, 400 foot deep canyon is home to ancient cliff dwellings, and this park works to preserve the once thriving community. 
Located just 20 minutes east of Flagstaff off Interstate 40, Walnut Canyon National Monument attracts visitors from around the world. Both the Rim and Island Trail are accessible hiking trails for visitors. The Island Trail is a walk back in time. On the Island Trail, you will experience access to 25 cliff dwelling rooms and a 360 view of more dwellings layered in rock across the canyon. The trail is one mile round trip and can be considered strenuous if visitors are not adjusted to the altitude. The trail descends nearly 200 feet, requiring the hiker to climb 736 total stairs. There is a $25 park entry fee and the trail is open from 9 a.m. to 4 p.m. and takes roughly an hour to complete. Ava Nichols, NAZ Sports. What beautiful scenery, Ava. I'm definitely going to have to check that out soon. It really is so wonderful to get out and enjoy nature, especially since we live so close to such beautiful sights. We're heading into another quick break, but don't go anywhere. When we return, we'll take a look at some exciting NAU basketball matchups as we head into the Big Sky Conference tournament. Well, Thomas, you've got pre-diabetes, but with more exercise and a change in diet, it can be reversed. I've tried exercising. It, it just makes me hungry for bacon. I love bacon, too. And who really likes to exercise? Not me. <laughs> me neither. Nobody. <laughs> 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 so we're good? What? Oh, you still have prediabetes. Big time. Bye-bye. Hi. Hoping for a crisp breeze to help keep you alert. Oh, oh, he took a sip of water, too. That'll probably help. You were probably going to turn down the radio, too, so you could focus. Right? Probably okay isn't okay. Right? If you see a warning sign, stop and call a cab, a car, or a friend. I think the water line is what really drove it home. I blew on him. Even though the NAU men's basketball regular season is over, that doesn't mean that their season has ended yet. The Lumberjacks will now head to Boise, Idaho for the Big Sky Tournament. NAU will play as the seventh seed in the first round against the eighth ranked Idaho State Bengals. Tip off is set for March 9th at 8 p.m. This game will be aired on ESPN Plus as NAU will try to win its third conference tournament championship and get an automatic bid into the NCAA tournament for the first time since 2000. The women's basketball team had an incredible regular season this year, finishing at 23 and 8 overall and 15 and 3 in conference play, which not only puts them at the number 2 seed in the Big Sky Conference, but also sets a new single season win record for NAU. Their next stop is also in Boise, Idaho, where they are set to take on either Sacramento State or Idaho State. The first round of the postseason for NAU will be played this Sunday at 2.30 p.m. and, as always, will be available on ESPN+. The good news is we are sending a team of reporters to Boise. You can follow along the Big Sky Conference Tournament on our social media pages on X and Instagram at NAZ underscore sports underscore. Now, that's all that we have for you tonight. Thank you all for joining us for this edition of The Overtime. I want to thank our sports reporters, Ava Nichols, Ashley Hinchy, and Brian Adams, and I'd also like to thank my co-host, Angel Castellano. I'm Adriana Sparks, and we won't have a show next week in Lewis Spring Break, but we'll see you Tuesday, March 19th, for the next edition of The Overtime.